All right, here's the midterm solutions. This is the white test problem one, uh, true false section. First one, the limit as x approaches two of this thing equals 12. You can either factor out the top, which will take a little bit of work, but eventually you'll find that this ends up being true if you get rid of the hole here. Um, maybe an easier way is to note that what we have here is the definition of the derivative when f of x equals x cubed and a equals two. If you plug these guys in, you'll come up with exactly this. So the definition of the derivative um, at this point, we got f prime of x is equal to 3x squared. Um, and 3x squared, if you plug in a 2, for x, you get 3 times 4 is 12. So this is correct. This is true. Uh, number part B, definition of the derivative of f at a point a is the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. That is true. That's just the definition of the derivative, um, kind of the definition of it. Part C, the derivative of this mess is this. Um, what I want you to notice here is we got a product rule going on. It's this function x squared times this function e to the sine of x. So we'll have to have some addition going on, 2x times this plus leave this alone, take this derivative. At any rate, this definition is definitely not this. You can figure out what exactly it is if you want, but you don't have to. Um, I think what's going on here is if you had just taken the derivative of this and then changed the sine to a cosine, maybe you'd come up with that, but that's not the right way to take these derivatives. Um, D, the fourth derivative of sine of x is sine of x. Um, I don't know a great way to figure this out except for just going through it all. The derivative of sine is cosine. And then the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And the derivative of negative sine is going to be negative cosine. And finally, the fourth derivative, the derivative of negative cosine, would be negative negative sine. In other words, just sine of x, which, sure enough, uh, e. If two functions have the same derivative everywhere, then they must be the same function. This is false. Um, this is just saying they have the same slope everywhere, um, not necessarily the same function. One could be the other one just shifted up a little bit. For example, f of x equals x squared, and g of x equals x squared plus, I don't know, 3. This guy's just shifted up. The slopes will be the same. If you take the derivatives, they'll be the same, but they're clearly not the same function. Uh, if f prime of 3 equals 0, then the tangent line to f at x equals 3 is vertical. This is false. It's almost true. Um, this tangent line at this point would be horizontal. Horizontal is not vertical, so it's false. G, um, hopefully when you see this big mess, I mean, you can try to figure it out. You'd expand this, take a little while, unless you remember the Pascal's triangle trick. But a better way to do it is notice that this looks a whole lot like the difference quotient. Um, and it is, it's the difference quotient uh, for f of x equals x to the fourth. So therefore, this limit is going to be the derivative of f of x. Uh, it's going to be equal to 4x cubed. It's not going to be equal to 0. So this is false. Um, and the last one, the derivative of this guy is this guy. Kind of the trick that I was trying to get you to look at is if you treated e cubed like it was a function whose derivative is e cubed, then I guess this would be right. But it's not right. E cubed is just a constant, right? This is just a number right here. So in fact, this derivative is actually equal to e cubed. Pull the constant out in front, x goes to 1. So this guy is also false. So that's the end of the true-false section.